so now that I have the base made, I'm going to start on the tabletop. And the tabletop, I got this 8 quarter ash at a really good price. And while it's a little bit thick for what I need, I'm going to chop it to size using this template I made with this uh, wooden compass and save the leftover for another project. I'll end up, once I have all the pieces cut, I'll end up using the planer and get this down closer to about an inch and a half, which is what the original tabletop in the photo was. So I'll start cutting these down on my radial arm saw and then send them through the planer. So I just got done planning my boards and you can see how nicely they cleaned up. Um, I don't have a joiner so luckily these seem to come out pretty flat. I shouldn't have to mess with them too much for the tabletop. Now before I plane them I had written on the side the order in which they went and now the last thing to do before I glue these up is I'm going to rip both sides because they're still rough. So I transfer those numbers to the top of the board just so it will be easier to line it up. Now I ended up taking about a half an inch off. This was the original lumber. And you can see it's, pro it's actually a little bit more than that. I took a, a decent amount off. a lot of long clamps and since this is over 54 inches I'm going to end up pulling it together in two sections of three and then one big section all together. So in order to make sure since my clearance is pretty small in certain spots in order to make sure I put my biscuits in the right spots and glue this up so my pattern will still match I'm just going to trace it. So with my pattern traced, I went through and marked about six inches apart for the biscuits. And now I'm going to make the holes for the biscuits using a biscuit, biscuit joiner and number 20 biscuits. So I let these two sections sit overnight and they should be thoroughly dry by now. So I'm going to take all the clamps off and bring them outside to glue the two pieces together. Um, when gluing things together, obviously the pressure going this way is important, but I also use these calls with duct tape on them so they don't stick to your piece. And those will keep the piece flat, especially on some of these bigger builds. And I could tell just by the straight edge on there, but also before I um, left the shop yesterday, I used a level to check, and these boards were perfectly flat. 
and that is priceless when doing something like this. So I have to glue this together, the two pieces together outside my shop because my shop is just too small for it. So I'm doing it first thing in the morning because I would like to cut the circle today as well. So I'm going to glue the pieces together upside down so when I attach my router jig, um, the hole for it will be on the bottom side of the table. So I happen to have this old headboard that I have from another project. It's just about 54 inches long, so my router shouldn't cut into it. And I'll play, I leveled it on my saw horses and put this piece of paper down to collect up, technically glue. And I'll put my two pieces on here and then attach them. While I'm waiting for my tabletop to dry, I'm going to be working on my pedestal a little bit because there's still some stuff left to do to it before it can be stained. And what I'm doing is I'm adding, this is 8th inch chipboard, little pieces, and I'm adding those to all four corners. And that is because the chances of this, the base bottom of this being perfectly flat and sitting on the floor perfectly flat is pretty slim to none, and to take the time to try and do that is just not worth it. So in the corners I'm adding this little eighth inch piece that you really won't see once it's sanded over and it, the, the table will sit on these raised pieces and you won't have to worry about it rocking or being on level. So I added this decorative piece of molding to the pedestal and I treated the whole thing with pre-stain and the only thing that's left to do on this really is um, there's a piece of round molding that will go around the base but I'm not going to attach that until the base is attached to the feet which I haven't done yet, it's loose and that's just because um, I'm also modifying the chairs for this table and I don't know their height yet so this might get cut down depending on the final height of that, so I'm going to do that at the end. Now, this base is getting painted the same way the tabletop is going to be painted. It's going to have an undercoat, a top coat, and epoxy on it. And the undercoat is going to be stained to match their kitchen cabinets, and the top coat is going to be white, and then the whole thing is going to be shabby sheet which is why I took some liberties in the finish, because you're not going to see any of these patches or little marks that are on there, because the whole thing will be eventually painted, and you'll only see through little spots where I go back in and shabby chic it, and then the whole thing is going to be treated with epoxy. So I'm going to put that first layer of stain on now. So the tabletop has been drying for six or so hours and I took the clamps off and I put my pattern back on here and traced the outline of it just to kind of give me a guide so when I'm using my router I can see whether I'm following a line. Also, from the original pattern, I have the center hole from when I use my compass and I'm going to mark that on the table. And that just makes it a lot easier to line up my jig when I attach it to the table. In order to cut this circle, I have a very simple jig. I actually wouldn't even call it a jig. I call it a piece of wood. It's a thin sheet of gluon that's about 7 inches wide. And I pre-drilled holes that match my router base. And then you measure from the center of where the bit for the router would be. 
out to your radius in order to get your circle. So since this is a 54 inch tabletop, I measured 27 inches from the circle. And that will give me 54. Now in order to attach it to the table, I use this wood screw that has part of the shank exposed towards the top. And that just makes it easier for that piece of wood to spin around it. In order to attach it to my base, I just take the base off of my router. Now I did countersink these holes for the screws so that the heads wouldn't touch the tabletop, but the screws on my router are round headed so they still stick up. So I just take this shiny packing tape and put it over the heads of the screws just so they don't, don't mar the surface and it slides easier. The bit I have to cut this is going to be an upcut spiral bit and this will cut this really well but this wood is super dense so I'm probably going to end up making three or four passes at about three eighths of an inch for each pass to cut the whole circle. So I'm not going to bother staining the underside of the table. It won't be shabby chic, so it's just an added step that's not necessary. So the last thing I'm going to do before I flip this over and sand the top is I'm going to drill a 3 8 inch hole where that center screw was. And I'm going to put half of a 3 8 inch down there, and then the other half will sit into the center of my pedestal. And this will be the marker for lining everything up when it comes time to put it together. I'll probably test fit it onto the base, and then this top will get a coat of that stain. So I have the table set up, uh, dry fitted, I have the undercoat on it, and this is the chairs. They're going to be modified with the old chair base put on top of them. And to see if that sits well, because right now the table is at about 30 and a quarter. And I made it high because I didn't know if this added thickness would make sitting at it weird. And sitting at it at 30 and three quarters, it's a little high. So I got this three quarter inch piece of plywood and put it on the chair and tested it. It, test it out like that and that sits well so I'm going to end up taking three quarters of an inch off of the pedestal center and then gluing this all together and it should be ready for paint tomorrow. So I went and marked that three quarters of an inch at the bottom of my base and I usually use my skill saw to just cut this excess off and it's not going to go all the way through. I'll just use a hand saw to finish the cut. So I leveled this piece of plywood on my table saw with some shims and then I put the pedestal in the base and made sure the top is level after that cut. And it's level both ways so I'm going to take the base out, pour a ton of glue in there and let it set up overnight. So with that base in there, I checked both sides of the arms for level. And now that that's, I'm going to let this set up overnight. But before I head in for the bed, 
I'm going to add that quarter round to the base of this. So this is dried overnight and the last thing I have to do to this base before it can finally be painted is I'm sinking some lag screws through the bottom into the pedestal just as an added strengthener. Now I had these left over from another job. They're awesome, kind of expensive. You could buy them singularly at the store instead of buying a whole box. And they're two and seven eighths. And we had two inches left in this one from the lap joint. So just to get a little bit more of that screw into the pedestal, I um, counterbored some three quarter inch Fossner uh, spade bit holes about an inch down. So this should go about an inch and seven eighths into my pedestal. So it's time to put this oil, um, I'm using Kills oil based primer on top of this stain. I let this uh, stain dry for over a day. I'm going to put this oil based primer on here today and let it dry for at least another day before I top coat it. Um, before I put this on there, I sanded both surfaces lightly with sandpaper, even though there was no glossy top coat or anything on there. I should not have a problem with this sticking. And then I went through with um, a rag soaked in paint thinner after I blew it off with my air compressor and just wiped the whole surface down just to really get a lot of the dust off. So these are the two pieces with a coat of primer on them and I'll let them set up for the rest of the day and probably overnight because I'm going out of town today and then tomorrow I'll spot test them with the top coat to see if that stain bleeds through the primer and if it does I'll have to put on another coat of primer and if it doesn't they can be top coated and I was hoping to get the whole finishing process done in one video but this video is already pretty long so the top coat, the shabby chic, and the epoxy finish will be in another video.